Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we're on episode number four, so... We bought some new we swag. We got the swag! <laughs> so yeah, uh, how many followers are we up to uh, now? We got to about 35 on Twitter, which Just is exciting. Amazing. So and uh, I think another 45 on Instagram, <laughs> and I think a little over 100 on Facebook. That's so actually pretty impressive. We decided yeah. to uh, celebrate a little and make Poppin it more official. Popping the champagne cork, if you People will. are some reason like us so, uh, <laughs> now we look like we actually know what we're doing semi-professional right say. yeah yeah so this week we'll be talking some contract news and we'll do a little uh, nickname trivia and uh, we'll talk about our some reddit posts and uh, our Twitter poll very good okay you ready to start the, the show let's do it and sports in just a moment but first we're going to talk to our chief meteorologist Aaron Scholl to give us the weather report for San Jose Aaron it's nice So the first bit of news we want to talk about is not shark related, but it's something that uh, both Aaron and I felt we wanted to acknowledge on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the unfortunate passing of Ray Emery, who was a goaltender for several teams, uh, Chicago Blackhawks, Ottawa Senators, uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Flyers. Anaheim. Yeah. Yeah. He played for quite a few teams, uh, won a cup with Chicago, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, he was found um, after having drowned. It was an, an accident. And it's just something that I thought we should bring up you know this is shark centric but um you know hockey is a community and i just felt like it was something that we wanted to bring up so if there's anything else you wanted to that's yeah, just really sad i mean he was 35 years old and he's practically our age yeah and, um it's just sad to see that that happened mm -hmm. he was uh he was a great player and a very big personality um and i think that's a lot that uh the nhl doesn't really have a lot of um of those big personalities mm -hmm. so he'll be sorely missed and it's pretty sad and tragic. Yeah, and and hearing you know that he's he's thirty five and and how close in age he is to you know at least to you and yeah. I and I'm sure to many viewers, um, it it kind of puts it in perspective. They're you know these are not just hockey players; they're, they're people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you, sometimes you forget. Sometimes you see them and on TV, and they're just these people that are on this pedestal, and they don't think of them as human beings. And you just kind of have to remember, you know, that every, every life is precious, and um, you know respect it with with everything you got and it's unfortunate it's just really unfortunate so kind of a bit of a loss for words there but um just felt like we need to acknowledge it and and, and bring it up mm -hmm. so uh from that uh we'll try to get ourselves back up when yeah. we can um a little bit of contract news we yep. have um noah rod who was a swiss hockey player is yeah. a swiss hockey player um, was drafted. I know we, we had mentioned this in a previous episode. I had uh, praised Doug Wilson for the Doug Murray trade where he got two second round picks. <laughs> yeah. This was one of those two second round picks was Noah Rod, the other being Julius Bergman, who was a defenseman, um, still a good defensive prospect for the mm -hmm. Sharks. Um, Noah decided that he uh, was not going to make the NHL squad, so he was going to play back with his um, some team in his home, home yeah. country, Switzerland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, Noah Rod kind of off the table now. He's um, Sharks released no an unconditional waiver, so yes. uh, he's completely done in the NHL. Um, I guess suppose a team could sign him if they wanted to, but he's probably not going to report. The only team I think is going to sign him is a, a Swiss league team. Yeah, so. he didn't want to report to the AHL to the Barracuda, right. um, which is unfortunate because mm -hmm. uh, he would have been playing on the different ice surface, which would have prepared him more for the NHL. Right. So um, I think his production kind of fell, and he saw the writing on the wall so mm -hmm. he probably got a good deal to go back to his home country and he took it yep that's pretty much exactly what happened so mm -hmm. unfortunately uh, a prospect that will never come to be and the other unfortunate thing is in that same draft year uh the number not number one the first round pick for the sharks was uh, nikolai goldobin so mm -hmm. that year is somewhat of a bust uh all in all really um some you can't win them all so just goes to show about the hockey draft we talked about earlier yeah. in the other episodes that um, I prefer to trade draft picks for better players because right. they're a given that you're going to have yeah. someone. But, I mean, that's a, a second-round pick and mm -hmm. another first-round pick that we had traded mm -hmm. or dra uh, prospect. Right. So um, I don't put too much stock into NHL drafts because yeah. of that. And a player like uh, Noah Rod, you know, he, he may have been NHL-ready, given a couple of years but he didn't want to take the time to 
take those couple years. So mm -hmm. he could have been a really good player in the league, and I guess we'll never know. But that's the chance you take. Yep. So moving on from, from Noah, um, some good Sharks news mm -hmm. in terms of new contracts. Uh, Merkley. Uh, yeah, he signed a entry-level contract. He's yes. still 17 years old. Um, so he signs a three-way, three, three-way, three-year, <laughs> two-way deal. Um, and because he's under 20 years old, uh, he falls under the slide rule. So what that means is um, if he plays less than 10 NHL games, his contract will slide forward another mm -hmm. year. So we, at some point in the next season or two, we could see him for nine NHL games. Um, usually a lot of teams will do that in the beginning of the yeah. season. They'll play their young guys nine games, kind of give them a taste of the NHL, mm -hmm. and then tell them what they need to work on. Yeah. And that's what they can work on when they get back to the AHL or their uh, junior league. Right. And, and you can be told over and over what you need to work on, but until you actually experience that. And again, we've talked about this too, the mm -hmm. speed right, of the NHL. Um, until you really experience the, the difference in the speed, the, the size and physicality, um, you can be told over and over what you need to work on. But it's eye-opening when you kind of get to see it for yourself by getting beat by these guys. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think we'll see him uh, for a short stint. and then Yeah, and up until that point, a lot of these players have never played in front of a crowd like in right. San Jose. So they, they're not used to playing in front of 17,000 screaming fans. Right skating under the shark head getting the whole experience of the warm-up and mm -hmm. just the adrenaline rush of being on your first shift and right. all that so it's good to get the jitters out of the way and uh, get that experience under your belt yeah. yeah moving on from that even better news in my opinion uh chris tierney chris tierney yeah. signed a deal he was on his way to arbitration That's and right. sharks and uh chris decided to uh, sign beforehand so they agreed on a deal i think it was uh 2.9 very close to 3 million yeah um great news for him he deserved i think i think he deserved every bit of it and uh it's a two-year deal i believe so it's kind yep. of two what i years. what i had uh talked about on reddit was um what i see it as is kind of a show me contract again mm -hmm. um and show me in the in the terms that um show me that you could be more than a third line center right I see him as a third line, great third line center. Mm -hmm. his, his hockey sense is just unbelievable. So defensively, he's great. Um, offensively, he picked it up this year. Yep. Uh, he trained with Gary Roberts in his training camp, a uh, former NHL player mm. who has turned a lot of players into better players over nice. the years, the last, uh, I'd say, half decade or so. He's mm -hmm. been running it. Um, so we've seen his numbers, his offensive number. He had 40 points yes. last year. Yeah. Um, can he build on that? Do you think he's going to be able to be better? Um, I think so because his wingers are going to be better and more yeah. consistent who are also up and coming and younger guys that need right. to prove themselves. Yeah. So going back to what I said, his prove-it contract, uh, could he be a second-line center? That's probably what he's playing for. Yeah, I think, uh, I can't remember where it was. I saw it exactly. It was one of the, the many areas of social media that we're on. Uh, could have been Twitter, I'm not sure. But someone had mentioned that, you know, this is a good good contract that you know, they, they see that his ceiling is more now of a 2C, right? The second line guy, mm -hmm. that's kind of his ceiling. I think he's a phenomenal third line center. I think he can definitely be a second line center. And I think maybe not on this team because this team's a little too deep, at least right now. Especially at center. Yes, yeah, especially at center position. Yeah. Um, but I th think at, at any other team, he'd be a pretty good 2C, mm -hmm. uh, save somebody like you know Toronto, you know, right. especially right now. Well, yeah. But uh, give yourself a little more credit. You, you, said, you said it on Reddit. You also said it on one of our previous episodes, okay. uh, I think it was a week ago, yeah. uh, saying the same thing, you know, that there, there may have a show me type deal. And, that's and I also thought they would avoid arbitration, which they did. Apparently, <laughs> exactly what happened. So um, good on you for that one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know if there's really anything else left to say about Chris Tierney on, on the deal. No. So from here, I'd like to jump into the nickname trivia. Sure. And I'm going to be asking because I'm pretty sure you're going to know. <laughs> I don't really have a list for anybody. A lot of this is just we just kind of sit down and wing it. So um, I don't really have a list of players. And we didn't go over this beforehand either, so I don't know what he's going to ask me. He's he, going to throw me on the spot. Same thing as the weather thing earlier. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that uh, you'll know them all anyway. I, I, right. I haven't shared anything with him because I'm confident he'll, he'll know them. Um, I also don't have a list in front of me, oh, so I'm great. just going to start nailing right. them off. If you know them, you know them. If you don't, sure. you don't. Um, and unfortunately, if you don't know them, I might not know them. And then oh, we're awesome. just going to sit here and go, I don't know. We're just going to make up uh, Yeah, absolutely. Right. So um, obviously, we're just talking about Tierney. Cobra. 
And we don't know why his nickname is Cobra. Well, <laughs> I think we kind of uncovered it earlier. Okay. Uh, going back to, um, he was replying to Joe Pavelski's mm-hmm. tweet about trying to get Logan Couture on the uh, the cover of, of NHL 17. Well, it was, was. I think it was Pavelski on the cover, and he wanted to get a stick or something. Or I don't know, but he 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 Pavelski called him a worm or something. And yeah. So he replied, "No, it's Cobra," and then that's where it came. That's from, where it I came think. from. Really so, interesting. Yeah, we could, we'll post it up on so you guys can see it. I wonder if there's anything more behind that or if it's just, I'm not aware of Mama Cobra. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Awesome. Who knows? Uh, it's probably like an inside thing between the players. Yeah. That we'll never know. All right, I'll, I'll throw you, retire. I'll throw you uh, not even a softball. I'll throw you a beach ball. Joe Thornton. Uh, Jumbo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Brent Burns. Uh, Wookie or uh, Sas- uh, not Sasquatch. What's his? Jesus. Uh Stumped on that one? He's the Wookiee. He's the yeah. It's Burnsy is the other one. Burnsy, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, okay. I was gonna Burnsy is more of a name than yeah, a nickname. but they throw e on the end of everything. Sure. Yeah. Um, Joe Pavelski, uh, Pavs or uh, Little Joe. Okay. <laughs> How about the uh, the Marvel uh, one? Do you know that one? The Marvel. One? Yeah, he's the captain. Oh, Captain America. Captain America. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. Uh, let's see. How about Mark Edward Vlasic? He's got pickle. Two. Pickles and uh, what's his other one? Eddie. Eddie. They call him Eddie. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not nah, Mark I don't think I knew that. Actually, I think Eddie is in the locker room more so. Like okay. the guys call him Eddie. Yeah. Um, every, all the fans call him Pickles though, for yeah. obvious reasons. Right. Right. Um, that was a great shirt that I uh, I bought a friend of mine uh, from Caraway okay. Clothing. Yeah. Uh, great shirts, by the way. Um, it's it's the pick the Vlasic pickle. Uh, jar, yeah, 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 and I think it's got the stork next to it. Nice, but it's got plastic and it's got the number on it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll link that up there. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty sweet shirt. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Jonas Donskoy, donkey. Yeah, yeah, that's such a good one. Yeah, poor guy. That's a that's a terrible nickname. <laughs> but it's it's so good. <laughs> like, I'd rather be like a thoroughbred than a donkey. Like, Fair. I don't know. Maybe he likes it. Who knows? <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll throw one more. Um, Owen Nolan. Oh, no, his nickname? Don't feel bad. I had to look it up. Oh, man. Um, He's one of my favorite players, so. I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i going to concede on that one. Yeah. What is it? Buster. Buster? That's what they called him. I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a power forward type guy. Buster uh, kind of fits. All right. But. All right, I got one for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sorensen. Ah, uh, uh, Scorenson. Uh, yeah. Nice. There you go. And that actually brings us to our fresh catchphrase for the week. Yeah. And for this week, we'd like you guys to let us know uh, which Sharks players and their nicknames that you th- either we missed or that you like, or if there was someone who had two nicknames and we only named one of them or something to that effect, uh, put it in the comments down below mm-hmm. on, on Twitter, Facebook, whatever else. And we're going to use the hashtag Sharks Nicknames. There you go. So anyway, that brings us back to uh, Sorensen, Scorenson, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a reason that we brought that name up, and it was for a reddit post that you had seen yeah uh i think back on our uh my post on our last episode on mm-hmm. on uh, reddit someone asked a question about uh where we see Sorensen mm-hmm. and uh where do we see his potential is he because he he did very well in the playoffs right is he going to be another one of those players that plays well in the playoffs and then comes back to the regular season and is just who he was before right when he was just nothing so uh, what do you expect? What do you think he's going to be this year? Well, I don't think he's one of those like one-hit wonder kind of guys. I don't think he just shows up in the playoffs and then that's it. I mean, I know he's kind of been that type of player. We've noticed him more in the playoffs at mm-hmm. least. But, I mean, I do see him as kind of – he could be like a third-line winger. Um, he fills in right now, I think, on the fourth line really. But, I yeah. mean, he. I think we talked about Chris Tierney earlier and his, his ceiling being a 2C. I think Sorensen's ceiling is – that 3C spot, mm-hmm. I don't really see him... A um, uh, winger spot. He's a winger. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The third line forward, let's just yeah. say. My bad. Um, although, may, who knows? He probably could play center of the way that they we draft. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah, I just see him as, you know, a good third line guy at his, his max. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, again, fourth liner. But I don't know if I see him much beyond that. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I mm-hmm. think um, he's, he's a smaller frame guy. He's speedy. Problem with uh, smaller guys in the NHL is they can't handle the grind of right. 82 games. Uh, you take a beating every night, mm-hmm. and games are every other night a lot mm-hmm. of the times. Uh, the schedule's so compact. Mm-hmm. So um, I see him as a 
fourth line, third line winger as well. Um, his potential, I don't think, is going to be quite up past the third line. Um, and again, he's just, I don't think he's going to be able to take that beating unless mm -hmm. he's able to, to bulk up a little bit more, which I don't yeah. I don't think is going to happen because he's just a small guy. Yeah, and he's, how old is he now? Cause oh, I'm not sure. I, I think he's um, in the mid-20s, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, you guys fact check me on that one, obviously. I'm sure you'll, or the you'll producer let me know. Will. <laughs> or the producer can, yeah. Um, but I, I guess my point there would be if he's, you know, in the mid-20s and he hasn't bulked up by now, he's it's probably not, not bulking happen. up. Yeah, yeah, I think he's happy with the size and the speed that he's at. So um, I think that's that's what you're going to get out of him. And I don't know necessarily that being a bigger player is necessarily going to translate into being a second-line um, player yeah. for him or anything. I think we agree. His his ceiling is third line. That's where he, he can get to and where he can play and be still be effective. Uh, but as of right now, at least with the depth on this team, it looks like he's he's a fourth line player, which is nothing wrong with that. Right, and I think a lot of their success came from the mismatch too. Mm. Uh, them Sorensen being on the fourth line, I think with Fair in, in the playoffs, right? Uh, they overwhelmed other teams' third and fourth lines mm -hmm. when they played against them, and that's where they got a lot of their scoring from. Yeah, uh, I see that as a big asset for the Sharks. They're so deep down the center right now, with, especially with Tierney signed again. Um, the wingers seem to be pretty set for the most part. Maybe that fourth line center, we might see Sue Mello. We talked about this before. Um, I, I can see a little, a lot more skill mm -hmm. in our third and fourth line. And if we can get a couple goals chipped in every now and then from those lines, that's going to be huge for the Sharks yeah. this year, especially in playoffs. But during the season, that helps right. uh, take away the pressure from the big guys on the top lines. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can get uh, some good goal production from uh, your third and fourth line, especially in the playoff times, mm -hmm. um, I mean that's that's always a welcomed asset to have. Is that that extra punch from you know the bottom half of the roster? And uh, speaking about playoffs and whatnot, there was a a Twitter poll that um, Aaron had put out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, go ahead and describe the poll. Uh, the poll was about uh, who you see as the biggest rivalry for the Sharks. Right going into the season mm -hmm. um, and I think there were four options on there and the overwhelming response was the Kings yeah I like Kings yeah. um, for for just I, so you know like my, my response was that the Kings were the bigger rival but that the Knights were the bigger threat yes which I think most people might agree with that one yeah so yeah. I agree uh, however I do think the Knights will take a step back this year yeah uh, they don't have Neil anymore they don't have Perron mm -hmm. Um, who knows who they're going to slot into those spaces? They got they have a lot of young prospects and upcoming guys, right. and a lot of cap space still. And they've got their goaltender, back, right. which is nice. But Flurry had a lot of luck on his side last sure. year. If you look at the the advanced stats, mm -hmm. uh, probably going to regress a little bit. He's a good goalie, but is he that good of a goalie and to be that consistent all year? Plus, he missed half of last season with injuries. Uh. Um, so it's gonna a lot's gonna come on Malcolm Subban, mm -hmm. the backup. Uh, they also have. Dong, Dansk, Dong, I don't know. Dansk, know Oscar yeah. Dansk. Who's another good goalie. Yeah. He's not quite ready, mm -hmm. but he performed very well for them. Right. If, if anybody plays uh, NHL 18 or even <laughs> NHL 17, draft him. He's, he's, <laughs> he's legit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At for least sure. the game thinks so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I see your point of Vegas being a bigger threat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also fresher in our minds because they beat us in the playoffs last yeah. year. Yeah. And got to the finals and thankfully lost. Yeah. And and maybe it's not really fair um, because the the Kings do have you know their their brand new shiny thirty Koval something Chuck, thirty five year old, year old. <laughs> yeah thirty five yeah. year old um, I mean Kovalchuk is is a threat in it of himself and I don't know that I see much more on the Kings that bothers me beyond Kovalchuk at least comparing to last season mm -hmm. so. I don't know. I still feel like Vegas is probably going to be um, a strong contender. Even over the Ducks? I mean, that was the other kind of rivalry, I guess. Oh, the, the I division. don't think... Did two people even pick the Ducks on that poll? Nah, I don't know. One <laughs> or two, maybe. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, and no disrespect to the Ducks, because... Um, no, we can fully disrespect Okay, the Ducks, fine. A lot of disrespect fine. to the Ducks. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you know, Corey, Perry, and Ryan gets left. They've just... They've kind of been on a bit of a downhill slope. Ryan slogan. Kessler might not even play next year. Oh, really? Yeah, he might be out the entire year. Oh, wow. I did not know yeah. that. Okay, well. They yeah, just, Anaheim just signed uh, Adam Henrique oh, okay. uh, yeah. as their second line center. Uh, he'll slot solid in the player. second line center. Very, Very solid, solid yeah. yeah. Um, but most likely Kessler's going to be out all year. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, unfortunate for Kessler, but um, 
great for the show. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, in any case, was there anybody else on that poll, or was it just Vegas? No, that was um, Vegas. Uh, Kings, Ducks. Kings, Ducks, and then other. Other to write in. Yeah. Any other write ins? I don't think. No, I didn't see anything. Uh, one person did write in about Detroit. Oh, okay. um, saying that real fans would pick Detroit. It, yeah, that, that Okay, that's real true. fans. You mean old fans. Yeah. You mean people that aren't fans of the Sharks in the last, <laughs> you know, more than 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we go way back, Calgary, <laughs> the original rivalry was yeah. Calgary. Yeah. Theo Fleury, mm-hmm. for those of you who don't know Theo Fleury, that go to YouTube and look him up. His, Five foot six, yeah, maybe? little guy, jitterbug, yeah, yeah. That Spud guy Webb was with the NHL, unreal. Yeah. Uh, he did it all, man. Yeah, he had speed before speed was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like him and Pavel Bure back in the day, they were amazing. Yeah. Uh, but but Bure's bigger than five six, though. Yeah, nothing well, well, with Flurry. If I'm not mistaken, Flurry still threw the body around, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like a little jitterbug. He was a um, honey badger. Um, who's the other guy? Not nearly as skilled, but like Scott Scotty Nickel. Remember Scotty Nickel? Oh. Yeah. Little guy, but he was he just he was like the Chihuahua that thought he was a Rottweiler, yeah, you know. And, yeah. and there's there's a time where um, Scotty Nichol is actually fighting Joe Thornton because they were on different teams at the time, <laughs> and it's literally like he's he's punching grabbing up. like this and punching <laughs> upwards like to to get Joe, and Joe's just like this. <laughs> um, but but he fly. he put Joe up against the wall doing it too, yeah. so. Uh, you know, never underestimate those little guys. Um, little guy power. I'm five foot seven, by the way. Anyway, um, <laughs> so Theo Theo Fleury, yeah, he was just one of those guys where he would he would throw the body around, but he had really good hands. Right. He could score. He Photo was crazy. super fast. Yeah. And he was just one of those guys that the fans love to hate. I remember watching oh. him, and every time he touched the puck, booing, boo, boo. everybody. Yeah. Calgary is like the original rivalry yeah. for the Sharks. It was yeah. also their very first win, the Sharks' first ever win was right. against Calgary. Yeah. Um, they played against them several times in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Owen Nolan, I think in the late 90s, we played against them in yep. the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And um, that's when they had, uh, who was the goalie? Oh, I'm blanking trivia. on the name. Yeah, Trevor Kidd, right? <laughs> there you go, yeah. Trevor Kidd. Um, I said trivia. Said trivia, but that's trivia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Trevor Kidd. Um, I, th- I believe we beat them, and that was kind of an underdog. Yeah. Um, that was probably the second underdog, right? The first one being Detroit, and that's right. probably why they're saying are real Well, we real beat fans. Detroit in 93-94 yeah. um, when Detroit had just won, I think, the Presence Trophy, and mm-hmm. we were the eighth seed. And right. Beat him in upset with Jamie Baker's. Game and we talked goal. about yeah, we yeah. talked about that in previous episodes too. Right. An yeah. eighth seed beating a one seed, something right. that you don't see in some of the other major sports. But um, there's a lot of parity in the league, and yeah. even back then, you know, ninety three, ninety four, not so much parity in the league then, but still something you would see. Mm-hmm. You know, and it wasn't totally unusual. It was a big story. Playoffs are a whole different season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what about some other rivalries? What happened in the late nineties? Oh. Biggest foe. With, with Dallas? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember why? Uh, you know, I remember. I, I do remember uh, Ed Belfour uh-huh. um, coming from Chicago. Ed the Eagle. That's it's another. There. There's another nickname. There's right another there. nickname for yeah. you there. Uh, so don't write that one in because we got it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Eddie the Eagle. Um, Ed Belfour. He yep. played for Chicago. Decided he wanted to play for the Sharks. No, he got traded. To the oh, Sharks. sorry. Tr- traded to the Sharks. Decided uh, he didn't want to play for the Sharks anymore after and he was done with his little contract. He was a then, rental player yeah. essentially, and the, and he. Signed with Dallas that summer, yep. and he said, I wanted to be on a cup contending team. And all the Sharks were like, well, piss off. Yeah. You know, we're not a cup contending right. team. Right. And that was a rivalry born right there. And yep. Dallas I, went on to win a cup in 99. They, yeah, they went on and won a cup not long after that. But I do remember one one thing that so stands right. out uh, when Belfort was in, in Dallas. And I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was the Sharks' home game. And it was, again, Owen Nolan, Buster. Um came and was charging the puck and it had gone around behind the boards and yeah. uh, Eddie comes out he trucked him tra- <laughs> Eddie comes out stops the puck you yeah. know just to keep it from going around he goes to pass it out or whatever and Owen Nolan did not let up yeah and Owen Nolan crushed Eddie <laughs> we'll see if we can find that clip and yeah we'll, we'll post if, it if we here. can we'll we'll put it in the little eye icon that's yeah. up there um that'd be awesome yeah. but yeah, he just basically ran him over. I, and it'll show on the clip because I don't really remember. But I don't remember anybody from Dallas really standing up. No, I'm him. pretty sure that's they did. The okay, I, there's no way a line brawl. <laughs> yeah, Back I don't know. Do I, I, I'm, I'm I'm probably wrong, and they probably did just jump in and and, and rough up Owen Owen after that. But I just I don't remember that. I guess yeah, I guess I remember they go back and look. Yeah. I remember the good part. Let's yeah. say that. Okay, just trucked him. Yeah. just absolutely trucked was, him. Okay, so so we had Calgary. Cover we had first. Uh, Dallas, yep, and then Detroit, mm-hmm. right? Um, 
I mean, that was when Detroit was in the West. Right. And not in our division, but in the West. We played him in the playoffs a couple years in a row. Mm -hmm. And for a while, Detroit kind of had our number. And just we get to the second round or the third round, and we just could not get past the Red Wings. And then uh, I remember one year, I think we beat them in the second round, and it felt like the Stanley Cup Finals. (laughs) And then by the time we got to the next round, they were – they were just beat up yeah. and exhausted yeah. and lost. And I can't even remember. I'm going to have to go back and look at who that yeah, was. Yeah, kind of takes everything out of you. Totally, yeah. yeah. Um, more more recent um, than that, I do remember a a time when Detroit was at the tank and Pavel Datsuk had the puck and it was on Logan Couture's birthday. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, Cooch, by the way, another yeah. name. Yeah. Um, so Couture was d up on... Um, on Datsuk in the the lower left corner, I think is what it was, mm. and Datsuk just gets the puck, goes right, goes left, and I, he just shimmy and shook <laughs> Kachur, and poor Kachur just broken ankles, just and fell flat on the butt. He left his jock strap on the ice. and <laughs> and it was funny because you could hear the whole crowd react. Now, mind you, this is in San Jose. <laughs> you could hear the whole crowd react and just, oh, <laughs> like. You know they got a real taste of what they just saw, right? And yeah. it was just it was just amazing seeing. Coach sure wrote about it in the yeah. Players Tribune too about how embarrassing it was. Yeah, and well he took it well. Maybe right not after embarrassing, the game. but yeah. But he took it well right after the game. Right. He went right to Twitter and he says, "Really, man? Like to Dodsuk, really, man? On my birthday, yeah. <laughs> you know, or whatever the tweet was. I'm sure I'll dig it up and get the exact words later. But um, he again he took it well. But that was one of those things that um, you know I remember from um, more recent history with Detroit and just shaking Kachur real bad. Yeah. And the one thing I hate the most about uh, Detroit is the they travel so well. I'd say they're fans. That they're fans. Travel. They travel so well. It's like well. a home game for yeah. Detroit. Well, it used to be. It's less so now because Detroit's yeah. not so good anymore. And right. they only come once a year yeah. now that they're in the East. Yeah. But, um, yeah, agreed. I hated playing because there's so many Detroit fans. Yeah, I didn't realize there's that many transplants out here <laughs> from Detroit. I mean, yeah, I yeah. understand. Well, there's there's transplants from, from Detroit. There was actually somebody who I used to work with um, who said that her dad was a Detroit fan because when they moved here from another country, that was that was the team that was popular. So it didn't matter where you moved uh, to or from. If you wanted to be a fan of hockey, Detroit was, was one of the teams. Were they Russian? Uh, no, they were actually uh, Hispanic. They were uh, um, from Mexico. So nice. um, when they moved up across the border, it was just like, we like hockey and we, oh, Detroit. It's like and picking that's the what Yankees it was. back in the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They were the, they're the most famous team at the time. So I'm sure a lot of that has to do with people kind of like, not really bandwagoning, but just picking a team, right? right? Yeah. Um, so, and, and at the time, I guess there wasn't much of a better team to pick than, than Detroit. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that was, that was part of it was that they've got all these fans that either they're transplants or they just became fans of Detroit and they just traveled so damn well, yeah. or they're just in the area. And anytime it comes, uh, to a Detroit San Jose game, at least back in that time, cause again, like you said, they're in the East now, mm-hmm. um, y- you know, you'd look around and there's just a sea of red. Yeah, uh, amidst your teal, and when they score, oh, it's, it's like worse. you're you're waiting. Score, it's so bad. You're waiting for the goal horn yeah. because they're cheering so damn loud, you yeah. know. So uh, it was just one of those things I really hated uh, going to to those the you know, Detroit games. There was one game, uh, probably close to ten years ago, mm-hmm. where Detroit went up like three or four nothing in the first period, right? And I was getting so sick of their fans, and the Sharks stormed back and won like seven to five. <laughs> and those fans that were up celebrating, all the Sharks fans were just rubbing it in their face. <laughs> like it, that that game was awesome. That nice. felt like such sweet revenge. Like just <laughs> get out of our sit, not get out of our city. Yeah. Just like you know, this is our yeah, it's our, our barn. arena. It's our, it's our yeah, barn, exactly. Baby. It's yeah. our barn. Yeah, <laughs> get out of our barn. That's excellent. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I think that brings us to the end of episode four of oh, the so Factor. Sad. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for joining us again. I do want to give one quick shout out, actually, to sure. our our friends on uh, Reddit, Sharks Reddit, yeah. as well as our friends on the Sharks Reddit Discord. If you're on Sharks Reddit, you're usually talking with Darren. If you're on the Discord, it's it's me or usually me, at least. I'm gonna we'll get you on there. there. Yeah. So, um, big shout out to you guys. You know, yeah, you're thanks. you're a big part of the community. Thank you uh, for some of the suggestions for a lot of the feedback for chatting with us uh we really do appreciate it so we'll yeah. see ya see you next week next week bye-bye hey everyone thanks for checking out the show 
You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.